I suppose we all have some dream vacation, some exotic location that we would like to go to. Maybe we've read about it or we've seen something on TV and there's there's really something special there that when we get there, it's the first place we're going to go because it's the first thing we want to see. Could you imagine being the blind man in John 9, a man who had been born blind? Could you imagine suddenly having sight restored, I'm assuming it was probably 2020 vision, what all would you want to see? What all would be on that list of, I want to see this, and I want to see this, and I want to see this. But what did the blind man see on that first day that the Lord gave him sight? John chapter 9 tells us of several things that he saw, many of them good, but many of them not very good at all. In fact, the Bible tells us in John 9, verse 16, the first thing he saw when he was brought before the Pharisees who were questioning what had happened to him and the circumstances of the miracle, if indeed it was a miracle, the first thing he saw was division. In fact, it tells us there was division among them in verse 16. There was division and disagreement. He saw this. Some said, oh, yes, he was the man. And some said, no, he wasn't the man. And some said, yes, Jesus must be powerful in the Son of God. Some said, no, he cannot possibly be. And so he saw, one of the first things he saw was, was division. This quickly led to a second thing that he saw, and that was distrust. The Pharisees who were questioning him didn't believe him or his story. And they kept asking him the details over and over. And so just from the get-go, they didn't believe him. And so they distrusted him, and he was seeing this unfold right before his eyes. The next thing that that led to, obviously, was disbelief. They didn't trust him, so then they didn't believe him, and he saw the disbelief. In fact, verse 18 says that they did not believe that he was the one who had been born blind until they called in his parents. So he's seeing disbelief, disbelief. He knows that it happened to him. He knows he's he's a walking truth of what had happened, but they don't believe him. And so they're calling the parents. And then something else that he sees, sadly, is disappointment. You see, the Pharisees had decided that if anyone said that Jesus was the Son of God, that they would cast them out of the synagogue. They would disfellowship them. The parents were afraid of this punitive response. And so rather than acknowledging, yes, our son has been healed, they acknowledge, yes, this is our son, but we don't know how he's been healed. He is of age, ask him. You see, they tried to be very diplomatic and, and defer their answer so that they wouldn't receive the wrath of the Pharisees. No doubt the man was a little disappointed in that. There are other things in this chapter that the man sees that were going to actually take another lesson next week and look at some more things that he sees. But for right now, let's look at the examples here of how people reacted to him, and let's try to see things from the perspective that God intends us to see them.